you know, it's still been really great and I'm very appreciative of being able to be here. And like, I love the sport, whether I'm racing or not. So I'm a massive spectator, <laughs> massive fan of kayaking. And um, also I get to see my brother make his third Olympic games and my whole family's here. So it, uh, it can be heartbreaking when I think about it too much, but in the same way, I feel very, very lucky to be here and yeah, great company. And yeah, the girls are racing so fast. It's really good to see uh, my teammates doing well. And, and uh, looking to do some stuff. These uh, Bernie and Floody, uh, Bernadette Wallace, the younger sister of Kenny, who picked up a, a medal a, a few minutes ago, and 26-year-old uh, uh, Naomi Flood, uh, she's won. I, I experienced uh, one of them today. I was watching the women's K2 500 final, and uh, yeah, just seeing like the girls that I was watching racing. They're my teammates, and they're the girls that I train with in my squad every morning, and. Seeing them, like some of them made it to the Olympic team and some of them haven't, and I, my heart just went out to all of them, like win or lose, I could just, yeah, that was a moment for me. And also for myself, I realized like, hey, my Rio Olympic campaign, uh, it's over now. And, but yeah, so yes, I, I get moments, but yeah, again, I've got good support, so. They're easy to tackle. But Australia coming through. It's uh, Bernadette Wallace, uh, 23 years old, and uh, Naomi Campbell. They they cleaned up in the on the Australian uh, Oceanic uh, races. So obviously, they've had a good uh, good February March. Uh, but but yeah, it looks looks good at the moment. Mm -hmm, making a nice move there. Take us back to when this all started to happen for you. Um, when did you far first get an inkling that there might be something wrong, or that you needed to get something checked out? Uh, yeah, I, I think I had the inkling uh, actually a year earlier and um, I had a bit of a, uh, I've got lots of freckles but this one just looked a little bit suspicious so we got it checked out and um, it was all okay but you know a year later uh, it came back pretty aggressive, uh, the melanoma and um, yeah I think just when you just know it doesn't look right or you think oh that's a bit strange or in my case you had a, a thousand people coming up to you saying what is that <laughs> and um, like sometimes you just need second opinions from your doctors and that's what I needed and now we've got it all out and yeah it's been a very strange journey but I'm happy it's happened now it's yeah I've not experienced it but how do you prepare yourself I mean for somebody who is such a perfectionist and, and works so hard uh, and and with any like any athlete everything is controlled and you know how to control everything and everything in your life you know how to train and all that sort of stuff this I'm assuming felt a little bit out of your control how did you prepare for what possibly could be terrible news uh, I've thought about this a fair bit and I <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't, you can't prepare for it. And what I'm really grateful that I've done this past season, my main goal was to pretty much have a good time, like be the best teammate that I could possibly could. And to like just really enjoy paddling, enjoy my life and be happy with it. And so when I did get the bad news, I think by, and everyone says just enjoy the moment, but you really do need to try your best at doing that. And I'm so grateful that that was my goal for the past season was to enjoy the moment. So when I did get the bad news, um, in a lot of ways, if um, if it was going to go like in a worse way, I was really happy with the way that I've lived. So that made it a lot easier to deal with. And yeah, I'm just thankful for that. <laughs> Obviously, very, very strong and very. Uh, if you go to Bernadette Wallace's website, it's about you can. If you believe you can do anything you like, and I suppose having a big brother, it's sibling rivalry, but it's uh, it, it certainly helped them out there. Have there were moments when you thought this Top might kill me, this might be the end for me. Uh, yeah, and I, there's times I still think that because, like the, um, yeah, if you have a look at melanoma cancer, it's. It's quite, it's quite a tricky, tricky business. The recurrence of it is, is the dangerous bit. 
and um, with my type of skin there's no doubt that I'm going to have another skin cancer and another one so it's in my genes and um, like yeah there's still times that I think about that but you, otherwise you're just locked up in your room hey you yeah you gotta look at um, look on the upside and like this week I've had a chance to come here I could say no and I could just be at home in the shade <laughs> and, or you know being glum but you just gotta say yes to things now and glass, glass half full the whole time so we should clarify but as things stand at the moment you're you're okay aren't you you're, you're in the clear there's for now fingers crossed that the news is good yeah I've had some like really good news with um with my melanoma it's gone well so far and it um it was a stage 2c so the uh, statistics on that are great um even when you do get it all cut out but what was super good news and what i'm holding on to right now is that it wasn't in my lymph and it wasn't in my blood so i'm yeah right now it's great like i'm healthy and so now I just got to keep regular checkups, make sure that it doesn't reoccur anywhere else. And um, yeah, just keep on top of it. It can, you know, it can hide in microscopic cells in places or so the doctors say, but um, I'm fit, I'm healthy, I'm young, and I'm very aware of it now. Do you still allow yourself to set goals? I mean, everyone who's followed your career knows what you're capable of, and we all know that you know, that Olympics is, is just around the corner. Do you set yourself a goal to maybe back it, be back in the boat for world champs next year? Or what, what, what are you doing with your, with your canoeing career? Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's a little bit more flexible now. Uh, as far as my canoeing career, I think I'll be paddling for the rest of my life in, in those regards. So, like, if I if I feel like it and if I'm happy to pick up the training or, you know, get back into it, I'm going to go with it but at the moment it's I'm just going as I feel and I think that's how I've handled my career so far is um, if you're excited about something you're going to do it well so and I like to do things well as as we've said being a perfectionist so if I feel like it I'll do it and right now I'm yeah my plans are open Benedict Wallace Miami flat Great to interview, very laid back, very friendly, and uh, obliterate the field with a big word, but uh, they won by one and a half lengths from the from the Americans, and third place. I think I'm a very honest person, and I don't I don't have a lot to hide. In, in terms of sharing things like this, if it helps someone else, then, like, and the truth is everyone dies, so if I'm helping someone else live their life, better then I'm happy to share things like that and um, I didn't realize it was going to go so far and it was actually just a, a quick post to say thank you to everyone that's supported me along my way and in my career uh, to these Olympic trials because I didn't think it was fair for them to for me to hold back and come over the line last and, or not race at all and have all these people that love me go what are you what are you doing you love this sport but so I was actually just putting it out there just to say thank you and I ended up with even more support than ever, which is amazing. Like, yeah, I just got goosebumps again thinking about it. <laughs> but, yeah, and uh, since then I'm, I've had lots of friends sending me photos of them at the doctors getting their skin checked. My whole family's gone again and um, I've had guys come up to me this week even be like, last week I got this thing taken out, check this out. So. It's really cool that I hope that I'm making a difference in those regards. You must feel incredibly unlucky as well. I mean, do you feel unlucky because you're someone who is, you and I were talking about this the other day, and you've always been someone who's been very sun smart. You've always worn the long sleeves, you've had the hat, you've probably done more than what, you look around this event here this week, there's a lot of people who are not taking very many sun precautions. You do, yet this has happened to you. So do you feel unlucky in that regard? Uh, I don't feel unlucky, it, it happens, and cancer doesn't choose who it picks. I feel lucky that I got it all out, and it's, and I'm lucky that I'm fit and I'm healthy and I've made those kind of lifestyle choices, and it, it's no lie that when I, 
when I walked around here and I seen people, you know, um, just walking around shirtless and whatnot. In my eyes now, it's the same way as like, like, if you smoke, you know the chances of getting lung cancer with that. If you're walking around with no shirt on, it's the same thing. The chances of skin cancer are, are up, but uh, with mine, it's hereditary as well. So. No, I'm part of the Wallace team now. <laughs> it's because I've got my first skin cancer. What else is also hereditary with the Wallace family is this incredible technique and style and, and passion for paddling. And as you mentioned, Ken has now signed his ticket for a third Olympics. For you, given everything you've been through, was that a, a big boost for you this week? Was that a big lift to see your brother out there doing what he does best? Yeah, for sure. And... Uh, no, he's such a, like, I can see that he's a legend now, and I know people see that too. And I'm getting teary thinking about it, because it's so good. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, because you can see that he's, um, he's paddled through his life. Like, he's got two children now a wife, a family, a home, and he's a working man as well, he's a lifeguard. You can see that, like, you don't just have to paddle to be an Olympian, you can paddle in your life, like, and it, and it can fit everything. And you, his, his goals have changed over the years, but what I love seeing is that he's, he's gone and won selection in a K4, like, he's really experienced, experiencing kayaking on the full level, like every class of boat, every race, like he's won medals in, at World Cups in 200 metres as well. He's like, sorry, <laughs> he's experiencing paddling fully and I love that. That's, so whether he made it this week or not, I'm just really happy that he's happy with his career and his life. You're making me teary as well, so <laughs> I'm annoyed at you for that, but I mean, it is, it, I think it underlines the strong bond that everybody in this sport knows exists within the Wallace family. I mean, for, for, isn't it? I mean, you, Margaret and everybody there, they're, they're all, everyone's so supportive of everyone in the family and it must just be so fantastic to have that family support all the time, including for you having to go through this illness now and have the family there supporting you. Yeah, so yeah, family's number one and yeah, <laughs> mum and dad are here, N Nomi, uh, Nixon Bodie, our sister's at home. We've been talking to her on Skype this morning already, so it is it is a really close family, but um, it's, it's just, yeah, I'm so lucky to be in it. It's like, like I said before, our little club, and anyone's welcome, but it's like, yeah, it's so nice to, um, yeah. Oh, so far in my career, like, um, every single world championships I've done has been with my brother. I've we've had our birthdays in Europe now together for like eight years or something like that. It's just yeah, very very lucky to have that kind of life and opportunity. Well, we're certainly very lucky to have had you in this sport, and we're going to have you in here for a lot longer. How old will you be in Tokyo, 2020? Oh my gosh, I will be what 31. So I that's believe. perfect age. That is a perfect age for somebody to go to an Olympics and to to win a medal and be part of the Australian team. And, and anyone who knows you, Bernadette Wallace, would not dare bet against you being there in four years' time. It's going to be... Because I know how determined you are and I know that, that, that you will leave no stone unturned to beat this illness and but also to get back to the fantastic career you had as a sprint canoeist before that so best of luck thank you so much you've got a beautiful scar there on your neck yeah I do yeah it's coming along well yeah my pirate scar <laughs> well it's a good talk it's a good party talking point I suppose when you go to it look we do we wish you all the best um and 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 we're all in awe of your courage and and are with you every step of the way as you fight this and we can't wait to see you back out there on the water and doing what you do best so good luck with all of that yeah thank you so much and thank you to yeah everyone that's just surrounded me with their love and support lately and and forever it's it's a constant thing but lately i've just 
been very uplifted. So thank you. Word, but uh, they won by one and a half lengths from the from the Americans and third place. I think I'm a very honest person, and I don't I don't have a lot to hide. In in terms of sharing things like this, if it helps someone else, then like. And the truth is, everyone dies. So if I'm helping someone else live their life better, then I'm happy to share things like that. And um, I didn't realize it was going to go so far. And it was actually just a, a quick post to say thank you to everyone that's supported me along my way and in my career uh, to these Olympic trials. Because I didn't think it was fair for them to, for me to hold back and come over the line last and, or not race at all. And, have all these people that love me go, what are, you, what are you doing? You love this sport. But, so I was actually just putting it out there just to say thank you. And I ended up with even more support than ever, which is amazing. Like, yeah, I just got goosebumps again, thinking about it. <laughs> but, yeah, and uh, since then I'm, I've had lots of friends sending me photos of them at the doctors, getting their skin checked. My whole family's gone again and, um, I've had guys come up to me this week even be like last week I got this thing taken out check this out so it's really cool that I hope that I'm making a difference in those regards you must feel younger sister of Kenny who picked up a, a medal a, a few minutes ago and uh, 26 year old uh, Naomi Flood uh, she's won I, I experienced uh, one of them today I was watching the women's K2 500 final and uh, yeah, just seeing like the girls that I was watching racing, they're my teammates and they're the girls that I train with in my squad every morning and seeing them, like some of them made it to the Olympic team and some of them haven't and I, my heart just went out to all of them, like win or lose, I could just, yeah, that was a moment for me and also for myself I realised like, hey, my Rio Olympic campaign, uh, it's over now and, but, yeah, so yes, I, I get moments but... Yeah, again, I've got good support, so they're easy to tackle. Level. But Australia coming through, it's uh, Benedette Wallace, uh, 23 years old, and uh, Naomi Campbell. They, they cleaned up in the, in the Australian uh, Oceanic uh, races, so obviously they've had a good, uh, good February, March. Uh, but, but yeah, it looks, looks good at the moment. Mm -hmm, making a nice move there. Take us back to when this all started to happen for you. Um, when did you far first get an inkling that there might be something wrong or that you needed to get something checked out? Uh, yeah, I, I think I had the inkling actually a year earlier and um, I had a bit of a, uh, I've got lots of freckles but this one just looked a little bit suspicious. Ian Floody, uh, Bernadette Wallace, the younger sister of Kenny who picked up a, a medal a, a few minutes ago and uh, 26 year old uh, Naomi Flood, uh, she's won I, I experienced well, one of them today. I was watching the women's K2 500 final, and uh, yeah, just seeing like the girls that I was watching racing. They're my teammates, and they're the girls that I train with in my squad every morning. And seeing them, like some of them made it to the Olympic team, and some of them haven't. And I, my heart just went out to all of them. Like win or lose, I could just yeah, that was a moment for me. And also for myself, I realized like, hey, my Rio Olympic campaign uh, it's over now and but yeah so yes I, I get moments but yeah again I've got good support so they're easy to tackle. Level. But Australia coming through it's uh, Bernadette Wallace uh, 23 years old and uh, Naomi Campbell they, they cleaned up in the on the Australian uh, Oceanic uh, races so obviously they've had a good uh, good February March uh, but, but yeah it looks looks good at the moment. Mm -hmm, making a nice move there. Take us back to when this all started to happen for you. Um, when did you far first get an inkling that there might be something wrong or that you needed to get something checked out? Uh, yeah, I, I think I had the inkling actually a year earlier and um, I had a bit of a, uh, I've got lots and I could just be at home in the shade and, or, you know, being glum, but you just gotta say yes to things now and Glass, glass half full the whole time. Because we should clarify, but as things stand at the moment, you're you're okay, aren't you? You're you're in the clear. There's for now, fingers crossed that the news is good. Yeah, I've had some like really good news with um, with my melanoma. It's gone 
well so far and it, um, it was a stage to see. So the uh, statistics on that are great, um, even when you do get it all cut out. But what was super good news and what I'm holding on to right now is that it wasn't in my lymph and it wasn't in my blood. So I'm, yeah, right now it's great. Like I'm healthy. And so now I just got to keep regular checkups, make sure that it doesn't reoccur anywhere else. And um, yeah, just keep on top of it. It can, you know, it can hide in microscopic cells in places or so the doctors say, but um, I'm fit, I'm healthy, I'm young, and I'm very aware of it now. Do you still allow yourself to set goals? I mean, everyone who's followed your career knows what you're capable of, and we all know that you know, that Olympics is, is just around the corner. Do you set yourself a goal to maybe back, be back in the boat for world champs next year? Or what, what are you doing with your, with your canoeing career? 